Hello everybody, I'm Stephen Bush and we are here talking about our third post-loss obligation which is show the damaged property or what we're really talking about is the duty to cooperate because show the damaged property falls under the cooperation clause of the insurance policy. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the policyholder has a duty under the terms and conditions of the policy to show the loss to the insurance company and to cooperate in their investigation of the loss. Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking. No, they don't have to do that. Well, read the policy. That's what the policy says. Almost every policy that I've ever looked at says that, the, that a duty is placed on the policyholder to cooperate in the investigation of the loss. So, to what extent, we're not gonna get in that today because I know that carriers and carriers adjusters sometimes take things way too far and it's gonna be subjective in a lot of cases, but we do have a duty under the terms and conditions of the policy to cooperate with the carrier to show them the damaged property, to show them the loss, and to help assist them in the investigation of that loss. Now, I wanna talk about something that I see posted in these Facebook groups all the time, and I wanna address it head on with you today. I see a lot of times contractors and public adjusters trying to prevent the carrier from sending out certain individuals to look at the loss. Uh, they don't want an engineer from a certain en engineering company, or they don't want this adjuster back out there, whatever the case may be. Listen, we have to put these things in boxes. You have to remember, that's not a duty of yours or the policyholders. That's the duty of the, of the insurance company. They can send out whomever they wish to investigate that loss, because that's their duty, right? That's their job. So if they want to send a St. Bernard out with a webcam posted on its chest, then let them do it. That's their job. Now, whether or not that is correct, that's uh, another topic for another day, right? Because that could, could create some bad faith issues for the insurance carrier for failure to properly investigate the claim, right? But that's not the, the policyholder's job. It's not the policyholder's duty. What is their duty? All right, we're on this side of the, of the contract now. The policyholder's duty is to show the loss and to cooperate in the investigation of the loss. And that's what you should do. Now, if you fail to do that, then that can create a breach of the contract for the policyholder, right? Like we said earlier, the insurance company is not the only one that can breach that policy. There's two parties to this policy, to this contract. The policyholder can also breach it by failing to cooperate, and we don't want that to happen. So, what happens if the insurance carrier says, hey, look, you, you, uh, you failed to cooperate with us in the investigation, so we're not gonna pay you. Well, in order for them to, de to demonstrate that, most, most jurisdictions, not every jurisdiction, uh, says that the policyholder, uh, when the policyholder has failed to cooperate, the insurance company has to show that it has made a reasonable request for cooperation. In other words, they didn't just call you up on the phone and say, hey, please cooperate. They actually sent a letter to you telling you to cooperate, something in writing, something official. Secondly, they must demonstrate an intentional failure to cooperate by the policyholder. Now that's where I think we have a lot of wiggle room as plaintiff's attorneys because intentional failure to cooperate, and I'll tell you a story in a minute, where I had a case where a client intentionally failed to cooperate. Also, they have to show that actual prejudice was incurred because of the failure of the policyholder to cooperate. So in other words, they were not able to make a determination of coverage, all right? So that leads me into my story. I had a client one time, and let's just say she was uh, extremely difficult to deal with, extremely difficult to deal with. She had a loss, she reported the loss, they sent the adjuster out, the adjuster came out and wanted to, you know, know what, how the loss happened, what happened? She wouldn't tell him anything. She literally would not let him in the house, showed him where the loss was, closed the door, and never saw him again. She never answered any of their questions, nothing. Well, naturally they didn't pay her, so it wound up at, at my law firm, and I sued the insurance company. But I knew it was gonna be a fight because I knew she had failed to cooperate. 
Well, when I got the answer, and one of the affirmative defenses was failure to cooperate, and I did the, the discovery, I got a piece of paper that kind of told me that maybe the insurance company never sent the guy out there in the first place to determine coverage. So what we did was we got him into to deposition and I asked the adjuster what his assignment was. His assignment was to document the loss and to report that loss back. I said, were you there to investigate the loss? He said, no. I said, were you there to determine coverage? He said, no. I was there to document the loss only. So, through a series of events with that testimony, I was able to prove that actual prejudice did not exist to the carrier because they brought it on themselves. They didn't send anybody out there to investigate the loss. But let's don't put the policyholder in that position, okay? You have to remember, we all are there to protect and to help the policyholder. In a time when they really don't have anyone else to helping them, right? They're against Goliath and they don't understand this process the way we do. So cooperate to the best of your ability and you will have fulfilled that post loss obligation for the policyholder. Now stay tuned because next we're gonna talk about one of my favorite topics, which is proofs of loss. So I'll see you in just a second.